First of all, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. And you teach, you're 23, mm -hmm. and you teach independently, and you teach on a, basically with tech gear. Yes. Okay, and most people consider that like harder, more advanced. It's really not. The back plate and wing is built to the student's body. So it's not in a small or a medium or a large. You don't have to worry about any uh, quick release buckles. Everything fits exactly the same every time you dive it. So it's very consistent and it's very easy to build habits on. Now, a lot of people are going to say, well, on the surface, it's pushing me forward and I'm blah, 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 blah. How, what do you say to that? Bring in your crotch strap. Wait, wait, what? You have a crotch strap on a, on a back plate and wing. <laughs> <laughs> and if it's too loose, the kit will push you face down. If it's pushing you face down, bring in your crotch strap a little bit. All right, so you don't really see this as a big problem. Mm -mm. And you know what? I'm going to just throw in a little support here, too. Everyone's picturing that, that law of primacy when they're in that open water class. Uh, I'm on the surface a lot, right? As soon as you're out of that class, you're not. Mm -hmm. You're not spending that time on the surface anymore. Right. You're more like this. Yes. And so everyone's thinking about all that time they were floating and not realizing it doesn't really happen after the class. Mm -hmm. Not that much. What I've found is with those back inflate BCs, so like the in between, between the jacket style and the back plate and wing, they will roll you forward. They're mm. not, they don't fit as snug as a back plate and wing. Right. The back plate is designed to take weight off of your shoulders. So like if you've ever done any backpacking with a heavy pack, all of your support comes from your hips. So your waist strap and your crotch strap is where all your balance and your stability is gonna come from. My shoulder straps on my kit is so loose that I can take it off mid-dive and everything's still attached. That's really where all your support comes from. It's like wearing a giant backpack. That's well said. And you, you've only been teaching for five years. <laughs> this is wisdom. Why did you start teaching? I was really encouraged by uh, a couple of my mentors. They saw that I was hungry to learn um, and grow as a diver. And they were like, you're, you're good. Your, your parents come from an educational background. So I grew up like teaching people little things. And they were just like, if you really want to make a career out of this industry, this is where you need to go. Have liability insurance. You can work on film productions. You can work with museums. You can do all of these different things just because you're an instructor. Yep. Even apart from teaching. So you would like to teach as a career in some way, shape, or form? Mm -hmm. That's well, eventually the goal. What do you do right now on for your day job? I know you teach independently. You got the logos. You got a killer site. You got a great Instagram. Oh, thank you. Shotzi Scuba, S-C-H-O-T-T-I-S-I-E-S. -T -T -E so what's, what's your day job? Um, I work different odd jobs. Currently, I work on a cattle ranch. Cattle ranch. A cattle ranch. Well, you know, if you ever work a dive boat or anything like that, it's like herding cattle. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. But I, I teach and organize dive trips kind of on a part-time basis, um, mostly working on a cattle ranch. It's a lot of fun. Keeps you in shape. You learn stuff. I can actually drive stick now. Just on the road from Blue Grotto, actually. So you're centrally located in the Springs, and you decided to go ahead and start teaching independently so you can start making connections. Yes. Uh, and getting some experience and learning the ropes and all that stuff. And was it a conscious decision not to affiliate with a shop, or is this just, just how it worked out? Um, actually, it was a decision. So when I started teaching, uh, I was working for the dive shop where I had originally had been certified. Their goal is to sell equipment. So they want you to have like eight students at a time. I was a new instructor. I had a couple really embarrassing classes and I was like I only want four students and so there was a bit of a disagreement there. Uh, I ended up started working at a different dive shop who just let me teach build my own schedule and charge what I wanted to charge which was great but it was a bit of a drive to that particular location so I just started my own business and said I'm gonna teach out of my house and run classes the way that I want to and find my own students and that's been the hardest part over the last two years of teaching is finding those students turn into social media and stuff like that. That's why I was able to talk her into coming over to my joint. <laughs> we'll do our best. When you are teaching, mm -hmm. what is the biggest challenge once you have your students? Sometimes it just has to do with the crowds at like Blue Grotto and on the weekends. On the weekends. Yeah. Because most people want to train on the weekends and but because I have those small classes, we are able to spend a lot of time doing skills kind of in a in a personal setting. So a lot of times by the time we're done with the pool training, people don't have any issues. They're nervous about diving in open water for the first time. Yeah. Yes, but they don't have any skill issues that would hinder them. And you believe it's important to make sure they have the skills down pat before you leave that pool. Yes. I totally agree with that. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen when that doesn't happen? Yes, oh, of course, yeah. Well, I met you at the spring. That's how we connected. And then you're on the Buddy app. We're both on the Buddy app. Shameless plug here. I followed your page and I saw you had a blog. And what's your web address? Shotzyscuba.com slash blog. 
So that's her nice way of saying, <laughs> it's my name, you idiot. Um, <laughs> it's, in my, uh, it's in my bio. You can yeah, find it on my bio. Yeah, shotsyscuba.com. It's in her bio. Link in bio. Yes. Why do we still have to say that? The blog is actually what intrigued me and prompted me to ask you to come here. Specifically, the blog on why you teach with a backplate and wing. You really talked about, you know, the pros and cons versus, versus teaching with like a jacket style PC. And you really had a uh, well-balanced, just well thought out. And every time I was reading and I would be like, well, there is this one ish and then you would have it and it would be there. And I was like, wow, somebody gets it. Mm -hmm. And you had something that I feel like, and this is the reason I really wanted you to come here. You have something that I feel like we need more of in the industry and that's the right temperament. Yeah. <laughs> you keep it fun. You're not saying mine's better than yours. You're not saying this, I'm right, you're wrong. And you know, there's a lot of egos in diving. You didn't insult anyone. You did point out some of the downsides to teaching with a backplate and wing, and you pointed out some of the pros, but you had a well-balanced uh, article. And, and we just need more of that. I mean, it's the basis of my whole channel is is let's not turn this into a I'm right, you're wrong thing. You know what? Whatever gear you have, just kind of let's go diving. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it, what's crazy is this came from a young person. We get into diving for what? For, for fun. fun. Right? Mm -hmm. That was refreshing to see. And I'm like, I've got to pin her down and get her to come be on the show. And here you are. It worked. I only had to bribe you with a couple SeaWorld tickets. <laughs> Uh, and a beer. But thanks again for coming. I love that blog. We're going to put that on there. In 30 seconds, give me the pitch. Why a backplate and wing? Well, from a business standpoint, it kept me from having to buy like 10 Jacka style BCs and a small and a medium and a large. I can build a backplate onto any size student, regardless of their height and their physical build. And I can get it pretty close to where it needs to be. But also, being in that particular type of gear, uh, it inspires students to think about how they feel in the water. Because I'm going to be asking, like, oh, do you feel like you're put being pushed head down or your feet dropping? So they will learn to reflect on their positioning and then overall their comfort. They will ask better questions. They will inquire about different gear styles, the pros and cons of each. So not only are you using gear that works for your business, you're inspiring students to think for themselves. And you've only been teaching five years and you're 23 years old? Yeah. <laughs> wow. I have really good mentors. I'm very <laughs> thankful for my mentors. It's about surrounding yourself with mm -hmm. good people. Uh, I same. I wouldn't have ever got where I was if it wasn't for the people that yep. were around me. What should a new instructor stop doing right now? You see independents out there. What should they stop doing? Teaching on their knees. Teaching on their knees. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of scared to say it on the internet, but yeah. Well, the people that are against it are, seem to be the more vocal. I actually get angrier people. I, I want to say more insulting. They shouldn't be on their knees where they're like kind of like, you're an idiot, you know, like... Uh, yeah versus like here are the pros and cons and that is something i have actually changed where i by the, at least by the end the only time i'll i think you still use in the pool not on open water but in the pool so i've had some people teaching privately they come privately because they're having real problems sometimes we have to eliminate all the other noise if they cannot get over that mass thing right where we will sit in the shallow on our knees yep. and until we get over this panic mm -hmm then we'll get all but sometimes if you can't get over that one thing it doesn't matter how good your buoyancy is you're never going to get through this right so you know but i do agree and i've actually always agreed that by the end of the pool everybody should be hovering and being able to swim properly and be maintain neutral ascents descents not slam into the bottom not you know all that stuff by the end of the pool and a lot of people are doing it by the end of the class and yeah. i think that's not enough time hey you got it you're done yeah. You got to get a handful of dies for any of this is really going to sink in. Yeah. What is, aside from teaching on your knees, from a like a business standpoint, just like to make it in this, I mean, because you're, you're doing pretty good, even if you think you're not. Um, what should someone stop doing or start doing right now that, to, that would make their lives easier? Um, as an instructor, mm -hmm. learn how to calculate return on investment. Becoming an instructor is expensive. The clinic is expensive. The evaluation, the equipment to be there. Um, once you're a certified instructor, you have to pay dues. You have to pay insurance. So you have this whopping sum right. of what it takes to be an instructor every year. How much do you have to make? How many students do you have to teach to even break even? Buying your gear, updating your gear. You're going to be biting your gear. mouthpieces, blowing hoses, yep. crunching things. Yep. Yep. Even if you're teaching for a shop, you still have to pay for dues and insurance. Mm -hmm. You can enter a, a year of teaching with 
three grand in the hole and you have to figure out a way how many students do I have to teach to break even. That's really good. How do you feel about the current pricing of open water? It needs to increase. I agree. Mm -hmm. There are tennis and uh, bowling coaches making $70 an hour and you can't drown doing those. I mean, I mean maybe you could after enough beers. Yeah. One thing I've noticed is people are afraid to because they really get to know and they're doing road trips and they're usually it starts as friends and family and mm -hmm. it's hard to because you almost sort of have to talk people into it in a way because they're nervous right yeah. and you got to get them to trust you and then you create the bond and you're friendly with somebody on that level it's hard to charge them a lot of money yeah I'm sure you've already dealt with this. Yeah. But what I find is, and people get all crank and huffy when we say this, it doesn't do them any favors because yeah, you can get the cheap class, you're never gonna dive again. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna feel comfortable. You're gonna be one of eight and leave class with no confidence and feel like you have to take a refresher in five years or in a year or in six months. The people that truly get it at the end, they want more. Mm -hmm. And you need more to get good enough to make it a lifestyle. Yeah. Let's say it's six to 12, somewhere in there within six months, or it's just never, it, you might as well mm -hmm. not do it. If you go all the way, right? If you keep going, you go advanced, you rescue, and you keep going, maybe you dive master instructor, or you go tech at the back plate and wing, you're going to end up wanting one of those anyways. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of where it ends. There's not really anything after that. You um, won't outgrow it. It makes sense. Well, I've even met artifact divers who are diving in black water uh, for fossils and things like that. I had met someone who had been through three jacka styles in a year, just diving a lot, running into stuff, ripping bladders. And it's like, if you bought a backplate and wing, you just buy a new harness or you buy a new aerosol. You just keep replacing components. But I know people with backplates who have been diving the same plate for 20 years. It, you won't outgrow the kit. If you could fix one thing in the dive industry, what would it be? We need to focus on confidence building. Yes, there's skills that you have to know how to do. I like to call them if-then skills. Like, if your mask floods, here's how you respond to situation. But somebody is paying you to learn to dive. So what do you do on a regular dive? You descend, you get neutral, you swim around, you enjoy the fish and come up. Somebody should be able to leave class knowing how to plan a dive, knowing how to assemble their equipment, check their equipment. They learn how to be neutral, calm and confident and collected in the water. Anything else that happens in the water, it's just an if-then situation. You just respond to the situation as you had been trained to do. But if I'm not confident doing something, I'm not gonna wanna go do it without somebody who knows more than me. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Who inspires you? Am I allowed to use actual names? Yeah. Uh, Lauren Fanning up in High Springs, Cape Country area. She's a very focused, accomplished diver. She's very kind, but nothing goes unnoticed by her. Other explorers like Jason Gully, who's also a National Geographic explorer, I've been able to do a little bit of work with him, who have used diving to reach into other aspects of life, science, education, travel, photography. Diving and just starting diving opens up lots of different avenues into lots of different industries that are a lot of fun. You're saying exactly what the director of NASA's Neutral Buoyancy Lab said to me. Just say yes, it just creates these unexpected opportunities. Because mm -hmm. you were meeting people that you would otherwise never have a reason to mm -hmm. be sitting on that boat for an hour having to get to know each other. Yeah. This is what I like so much about you. Typically, what almost all of our condescending comments, almost all of them, come from the tech divers. And, yeah, they... and yours was so refreshing to see a true, unbiased, let's really look at this, compare and contrast. Because I actually do agree with your position, but the way you put it out there, we need more of that. And at the end of the day, even if you disagree with the person, respect them yeah. and, and it, it, you can agree to disagree, that's fine. Like me and Mike, the guy that's always up, my buddy that's always on, we spar on all kinds of stuff. We love it. Mm -hmm. Like, we'll make fun of each other, and even the whole joke is, even if he wore exactly the same thing as me, I'd make fun of him for copying me. Like, you know, there's no <laughs> yeah. winning. We yeah. only argue yeah. to, for sport, right? But as long as it's fun, like, as long as we're not really demeaning anybody, and it's like, I don't mm -hmm. care if you want to wear a horse collar. If it, like, yeah. we're going to go diving, have a good time, I don't really care. As long as you're not causing me any direct threats, yeah. you are such a breath of fresh air. Tech diving is harder, and there's a much smaller margin of error. So what happens is you get those people commenting on 
recreational pages, like what mine mostly is. It's kind of like the black belt going in and making fun of the new kids at the karate. Right, yeah. It's like, yes, you've got it. You are better. Like, you're superior. You're good, yeah. <laughs> They're learning, and it takes a long way to get there. Remember that perspective. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, you just scare everyone off. If you're yeah. reading that stuff in the comments, my dad just bought me a new jacket style BC. Mm -hmm. They're going to feel dumb. Yeah. Ultimately, everything is going to have a pro or a con because we're not designed to breathe underwater. You're right. Like, well said. We're not expected to be able to survive. We have to have some kind of apparatus. There's going to be pros and cons. There are different specialties. Cave diving, you're going to use different equipment than you would for ice diving or spear fishing, things like that. You're going to have to tailor your kit to what you want to do because right. you're not supposed to survive there. Right. There's going to be pros and cons. You're right. That's what Mike said. Everything's a trade-off. Yeah. Taylor, why do you suppose you don't get worked up about it? You stay positive. You liked having a balanced breakdown. Why is that? Why Why aren't you on there, you know, hitting people in the comments and stuff Well, like that? diving is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be challenging, but it, it's ultimately supposed to be something fun that you can learn. And there's a lot of polarity in the dive industry. Uh, there's a lot of my way or the highway, but ultimately arguing about it on social media is not going to fix anything. If you can give sound advice, if you can give, oh, uh, this is my perspective, this is my experience, I respect you and yours, whatever. Maybe we can learn something from each other. And hopefully attract more people. Hopefully, to yeah. This world. Yeah. I, I have students who come through my class, they wear a backplate and wing, they ask me about a backplate and wing, and I'll tell them the honest, like, all right, well, if you're not going to dive all the time, if you're going to rent gear on a cruise, maybe something like a jacket style would be better for you because you're going to be wearing that and you're going to be seeing that more. It's not going to stunt your growth if that's the diving that you want to do. Go and do it. I have 14 year old, 15 year old guys that come through my class and they're about to go through a growth spurt. And it's like, if you're going to buy a set of gear, buy a backplane and wing. It will grow with you. It won't hold you back. You won't have to buy a new BC in a year. So you really have to recommend gear for what that diver is wanting. 100% agree. What's your dream job doing this? Honestly, what I'm doing now, just doing more of it. Teaching. Eventually, I would like to get into teaching cavern, possibly even cave. I feel like I could bring a lot to the industry because we don't have a lot of women tech divers. It, it is growing. Diving and teaching with other women is a totally different pace. It's a totally different atmosphere. It's just, it's really nice and refreshing. I love organizing trips. I love being able to travel doing this and see different things and meet different people and ultimately get to spend time outside and in the environment. So it sounds to me like you want to do this at a bigger scale, full time. Full time. And uh, eventually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't see, hey, I did it. And I think you got more going for you. <laughs> oh, so, okay, my real last question is when you're not on the ranch, when you're not diving, teaching, diving, talking about diving, what do you do for fun? Anything outside. Hiking, camping. Uh, I love to go fishing, kayak. I spent a lot of time outside. My family has been in Florida a really, really, really long time. So I'm obsessed with wild Florida. I've been involved in various conservation projects. We've been trying to find Florida panthers in central Florida. Have you found any? No, but we found a lot of sign. <laughs> okay. A lot of sign. Is this becoming like the Sasquatch of Florida? No, no, no. They're, they're there. People have seen them, but we've been trying to prove it. So when I'm not diving and exploring the environment underwater, I'm exploring the environment topside. Okay. I love wild Florida. You like big chain bars or little local shitty bars? Little shitty bars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys run across any skittawax when you're looking for panthers? What? Skittawax. What are those? They're, well, they're like kind of like gators, but they have like a beak, like a parrot head. They're fast. They're mean. No. Okay. No. Right. I don't even know what that is. Skidwack. All right, Taylor, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. It yeah. was awesome. I can't wait till your next blog. Those are fun. Thank Best, you. Just well written. I love it. So There's a lot more on the way. Cool. Well, thanks for making the trip. Thank you for having me. If you want to support my channel, go to sweetwaterscuba.com. We have all the good stuff like the shirts, the hats, the stickers, everything. Autograph kids books are on there and wholesale opportunities for retailers. Don't forget we're on almost every major channel. Put out daily content, new stuff all the time. I'm on live all the time. So hopefully I'll see you on either TikTok, Kenny underscore dial, Instagram, sweetwater underscore scuba, Facebook, just search me or just search me in your browser, Kenny dial. One of those should come up. Finally, the YouTube channel has all the podcasts and all of of the short form stuff it actually kind of has everything in one spot either way i hope to see you on one of these apps on one of these pages whatever connects us to the underwater world i hope to see you there let's show the rest of the world the rest of the world